Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start. Um, and uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. But I just wanted to say thank you and celebrate what is probably the single most collaborative effort um, most of us have ever done. It's a, it was a collaboration between uh, Champlain Housing Trust and ourselves. There's over 20 acres. Um, we worked consistently for years um, on Champlain Housing Meadow, <laughs> South Meadows, uh, LLC, and we've worked it out. But what I wanted to share is not only is it a private partnership with a nonprofit and ourselves, but the energy that has gone into this with the state, and you'll hear from Julie, the work that has been done with the city, uh, with the mayor and Megan, the head of water resources, um, and regional planning, it has been a team effort. And what I wanted to share with you, and you have handouts, is this little thing talks about, um, you know, stormwater 101. It shows about 800,000 gallons in one two inch rainstorm. It will treat millions of gallons running off of this property into uh, an impaired waterway. The vision that we all have kept in our minds is that this is for the lake. And we found a way to do that and make this a kind of a model shovel ready project, ready to go and will be done in a few months and be online. So um, I'm excited about it uh, for long term residents here for all of life. But the jewel is the lake. And this is all about dealing with the issues around the lake. So. Um, Kirsten is my partner in crime, and uh, we have worked incessantly together, and she's been an invaluable help. So just a couple of words. Thank you so much, Ernie. It, it has been a pleasure. Uh, my name is Kirsten Merriman Shapiro. I'm here on behalf of Champlain Housing Trust and the South Meadow neighborhood today. Um, for those of you who may not know, the South Meadow neighborhood is just past all these big pieces of Ireland equipment and it is comprised of 116 apartments and 32 owner-occupied condominiums, all of which are perpetually affordable and are a critical piece of the overall affordable housing inventory for the state of Vermont. And when we had this opportunity to work with Palmer Lowe and others on this, it seemed like a good match. We are pleased that we were able to participate this in this project by providing the land that will treat the stormwater from the shopping plaza from our neighborhood, and together we're gonna to be improving the health of Potash Brook and Lake Champlain. It's important to recognize the, the, the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission and Dan Albrecht, who sort of cobbled us together early on to get us to work together and got some resources here for us early on for designs from Watersheds United. And then he helped us apply to the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation for implementation funds. And with that, we are very grateful to DEC, Julie Moore and her team for supplying those very much needed implementation funds. This is a very large project. And without those funds, meeting the three acre rule on this property for our homeowners would have created significant financial hardship. And we're also appreciative of the city's water resources department who has worked tirelessly with us on this as well. Megan Moore and her whole team over there for administering this grant as we move forward. Um, and the South Meadow Upper Tier Condominium Association because they did agree to give the land to make this project feasible. And finally, and very importantly, I want to thank Ernie Pomerlo, our MC, our host, and our partner on this really important project. Ernie and his whole team who are here and our design team have been fantastic. So thank you so very much. Thanks, Kirsten. And, and yeah, the, and the thank you. We have a list of all the people that we've been working with, but Andres from Watershed has been phenomenal, Hoyle and Tanner, Ireland, and working with our team and my head uh, guy, Steve and Carrie and the wife and Chris have been phenomenal. So this has been brought it all together. So I'd invite you to look, you've got some handouts that explains Stormwater 101. And, uh, but what I'd like to do now is to introduce you to the secretary of the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources Julie has been a stalwart um, supporter of stormwater in the state, but particularly the complexity of this project, and it would not have, have happened without you and your team. So Julie Moore, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here today. And I just want to start by acknowledging, as the others have come before me, the, the incredible partnership that this project actually represents. Um, it is in every essence of the word, a pub public private partnership with Pomerleau Real Estate and Champlain Housing Trust, the city, Watershed Consulting Associates, Hoyle Tanner, the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission, um, as well as our ANR and DEC teams. And I'm thrilled that Maddie, who really ran uh, project managed this on our end, was able to, to join me here today. Uh, the three acre requirements to manage stormwater from some of our historic development in Vermont are significant and they are complicated, but they are also essential to meeting Vermont's water quality goals, particularly uh, around reducing phosphorus loading to Lake Champlain. And we know that phosphorus is really important to get after because it's, it is uh, responsible for helping um, feed harmful algal blooms that really end up limiting our use and enjoyment of the lake, as well as safeguarding, honestly, our economy, which relies so heavily on recreation and tourism. Today, as we stand here, this project exemplifies uh, that we can indeed move forward with complex projects that address runoff um, from large developed properties. And the collective and collaborative efforts of the landowners, the partners um, in this initiative demonstrates that despite, I think, some serious initial doubts about feasibility, uh, we're able to meet these retrofit requirements. And I think this project exemplifies uh, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. I don't think any one entity here could have accomplished what this project behind us will ultimately produce in terms of water quality. Um, I, this is an outgrowth of a, a public-private partnership initiative that Andres was in on the, the ground floor of, uh, looking for sample sites uh, where we could maximize stormwater treatment from a number of different land uses. And it was really a pilot trying to upsize treatment practices, reduce costs, and expand environmental benefits. And this is a perfect example of what the vision for that program uh, we hoped would yield on the ground. So I'd just like to end with a, a little bit of congratulations. Uh, today would not be here without the hard work, dedication, and cooperation of all our partners. Uh, we know that like many projects, this one was not without its hiccups. There's competing infrastructure demands, certainly rising construction costs, evolving funding eligibility, um, and require other requirements that pose challenges along the way. But I am so grateful to the partners represented here today uh, that they stuck with it and demonstrated their unwavering commitment to cleaner water with the shovels that are in the ground behind us. So my thanks to all of you. Julie, thank you. Your team has been invaluable. And as you noted, this is a synergistic property, uh, that project that could not have happened without everybody in the game. And so I'm more than appreciative. And we're in the city of Burlington, and Megan Moyer, who cannot be here, but we have a really great replacement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was instrumental in getting this forward. This impacts the city of Burlington's MS4. So I'd like to introduce the mayor of our wonderful city, Emma Mulvaney Stanek. Thank you. If you all play that cut on channel two, on all the TV. <laughs> Megan is my wife, just for full disclosure. We have to have two big jobs. All right. <clears throat> and she's currently out of town and I'm solo parenting. So this is like my solid for her in many ways. All right. All right. In all seriousness, hello everyone. I'm Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek and I'm pleased to be here with you today to recognize this collaborative multi-stakeholder effort to strengthen our commitment to Lake Champlain and its contributions to all of the watersheds. This modern gravel wetland made possible through this robust public-private partnership will treat around 820,000 gallons during every um, two-inch rainfall, reducing peak stormwater flows to potash, uh, potash, 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 you think Megan had said that enough to me over the years, anyway, potash, uh, brook, and phosphorus solution in Lake Champlain, while also helping the city comply with the state's strengthened stormwater rules regarding phosphorus in Lake Champlain. Our Department of Public Works water resources team, some of which are here today, maybe you can give a little wave. Yay, yay, hey. city workers, yay. <laughs> 
um, provided key administrative and technical support to advance this project. And I want to publicly recognize our city team for their creativity and persistence to get this project underway. And at the same time, major thanks also go to all of our partners, the state of Vermont, Parmalu Real Estate, and uh, Parmalu Real Estate, and the Champlain Housing Trust for citing, funding, and constructing this critical infrastructure. I want to specifically recognize the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation, or DEC, for their supplemental ARPA funding that brought this total investment in this project to over $2 million and closed a late stage funding gap. This partnership represents a rare opportunity to address multiple water quality permitting needs with, fully, wholly, with funding wholly provided through private parties and ARPA grant funds. We have proven again that by working together, we can address multiple community priorities and deliver a bigger impact. My gratitude to all of you who played a role in seeing this project through to completion and for joining us here today. Many thanks. Thanks, Emma. And you're, you're absolutely right when you said persistence and innovation and creativity in your team has been phenomenal. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, a third major partner in this that was with us from the beginning in regional planning, Dan Albrecht kind of helped me and Kristen see through this, figure out the plans, how to get grant funding for the engineering to understand how to push this forward and all the creativity around this. So again, I just wanted to say, Dan, thank you and for all of your efforts and uh, say a few words. Yeah, sure, thanks Ernie. Um, so original planning commission, as I like to say, we play a county on TV. Um, so we have no real authority, this being New England. Okay, so, so, but one thing we do is we bring people together and try to recognize all the talent it takes to bring this to fruition. So first of all, as you've heard, the DEC had this vision to create a public-private partnership. And they hired Andres Teresio from Watershed Consulting to look at several different sites around the state. So this was one of several projects identified. Uh, two, they worked with Watersheds United Vermont to help provide them the grant funding to distribute for these projects. And then when you need a grant administrator, that's one thing we're good at at regional planning is pushing paper. I, I know enough about stormwater to talk about it, but not any expertise in it. So whether it's Andres there or the folks from Hoyle Tanner, um, I know to get them in a room. And then I really appreciate the patience of the folks at Pomerlo with me dealing with, hey, I need copies of the invoices or I need your match documentation to sign the form because that's all part of putting together the grant, grant reporting of course, and then the folks from the city who bring people together and keep moving the project along. So stormwater is a complicated problem with many different parcels, many different sources of funding, but it takes time. But if you keep pushing, it eventually reaches a day like today of success. So we're, we're glad to have a small role in this and, and again, acknowledge all the wonderful folks who've made this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. You had a big part in this, so I thank you. Anyway. Today was an announcement day, but it was a celebration day, and it was a thank you day. So um, we wanted to share with the public what's going on here. Everybody wants to know what this big hole is. You all just heard about it. We have some, and I would invite you to take a look at what Ireland has done to date. We're ahead of schedule, and uh, this thing is moving along. But again, final thank you to the state, to the city, to regional planning, to our partners, and to all of those that have brought this to fruition. This is a magical, the largest right now in the impaired waterway to help Lake Champlain, which is the jewel of our community. So anyway, glad to be a small part of that, but I, again, this is an announcement and particularly a thank you and thank you for all being here. Amen. <laughs> That's coming up 17, 11 more courses. Yeah. Oh my God. 17, 17 feet. Can you tell me what that pipe is right there? That is an existing stormwater drain that was in this parking lot that we had to sever. We had it going into a, a storm system because we had to taper the bank back for safety to build the wall. So as the wall comes up, we backfill. 
then we'll put that back together with the storm drains, which then run, each property runs to a separate Vortechnic tank. The Vortechnic tank catches all the debris, everything out of the parking lot. We clean those and let's theoretically clean water go into here, but all the nutrients, the plants will suck up through their root systems and that. Any extra water goes out clean. So, yeah, I mean, so it isn't rushing into the yep. impaired waterway. It's turbidity. Is oh, I'm not out. talking on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds super smart. Go for it. Go for it. So, are there any road projects here? That this nope. Is going what to... there is is on the back side of that is the city bike path. When, when we that bike that path connects to the southern connector down by City Market on the Pine Street. And when we finish up at the end of the, the November, we will finish paving that to this end. This will be fenced off, so it's nobody can get in there. Nobody, it won't hold a lot of water because it's pretty much it's called the gravel wetlands. So the wetlands. It just looks like a swamp, but not even that wet. Their and then all the nutrients grab it as the water goes through and out of pipe. But there will be there will be no roads to this that that are visible. I mean, I can get into it for maintenance if I need it. But theoretically, it's just the two four technique tanks on each end. Is all you ever have to clean. So is this a permanent solution? Oh yes. Is this like a long term? Oh yeah. I mean, part of the state stormwater systems have changed as they evolve. I mean, I've been. With these guys almost 40 years and I think this is like the third iteration of storm water as it gets better and better so, so with the state of Vermont incorporating the Act 64 permit anybody with three acres or more has to like this place never had a storm water permit we had catch basins we collected it we cleaned and all that as we do everywhere but now you incorporate the new the state just pushed harder and it's just happening all over but this will be here for decades it doesn't wear out it doesn't rot you know so it just just like regular little stormwater ponds, and CHT has a, a little pond out back that they clean periodically. Yeah. And for now, cool. these are just. <laughs> and then we're going to. It's good. So where's the Burlington? You should talk to my other P3s because they're going to have a permanent. And then we're going to have a permanent. And then and then CHTs and ours are here. Ours are like just over the edge, the bank into there, and then theirs. And that land was just a mess. It was all just. A ver, a version of that rotted trees and with the bike path coming through. Oh, yeah. It was like really cool. So who's so land is be a huge who's amount of traffic. Champlain Housing Trust land, land and, and part of Pomelo's for shopping centers. So, okay. But more of it is over there, there because we couldn't take a parking lot here. So that's why the joint effort oh, yeah. too well, and work together. Each place had to do a permit so you combined them. It'll actually be still around three million dollars. All these properties would have probably been two to three million each. Ultimately, trying to do their own, and, so, yeah. and then with the city, there'll be a, a six-foot uh, grass strip before yeah. the fence. Hi, my name is Madeline Russell. I am a technical project manager for the grant here with DEC, um, Vermont. Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, for this project, I pretty much just coordinate the grant funding here. Um, this is one of our public-private partnerships um, for the three-acre space. We have the three-acre stormwater rule here in Vermont, um, and this is one example of the town or city in this case coming together with a private entity um, to combine resources and get stormwater uh, implementation here, which can be a costly process but super important for like our, our waterways, um, Tash Brook in this say, uh, sense. Um, so this was a very difficult project, long time coming. These projects tend to be very complicated and expensive. Um, so it's just really great to be out here and see all of these resources coming together um, and just folks pulling in their resources to make this happen. So my name is Andres Terizo. I'm with Watershed Consulting. I'm the principal at Watershed Consulting. And I've been working on this project for probably the last 14 or 15 years. It's a long time coming. And it's a really great project. It's one of the biggest projects ever in Vermont, a stormwater retrofit project. It really has a lot of value from the standpoint of removing phosphorus uh, before it gets in the lake, also controlling flow, the amount of stormwater and the rate of flow that's coming into Potash Brook, which is an impaired waterway. And it really represents a great partnership between a lot of different entities um, in terms of the land and in terms of all the permitting, all the a lot of different entities had to come together to make it happen. So I think it's a really great example of what, what what's feasible moving forward as Vermont tries to um, further advance stormwater uh, cleanup projects in the state. 